The Cube presents KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2022. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to Valencia, Spain in KubeCon, CloudNativeCon Europe 2022. I'm Keith Townsend with my co-hosts, Enrico Signoretti, Senior IT Analyst at GigaOM. Exactly. Se 7,500 people, I'm told, Enrico. What's the flavor of the show so far? It's a fantastic mood. I mean, uh, I found a lot of people wanting to track, talk about what they are doing with Kubernetes, sharing their, you know, stories, some war stories that are pretty <laughs> tough, and you know, this is where you learn, actually. Uh, because we had a lot of Zoom calls, webinar and stuff, but it is when you talk to people, oh, I did it this way, and it didn't work out very well. So, and, and you start a conversation like this, that is really different from learning from Zoom when, you know, everybody talks about things that worked well, they did it right. No, it's here that you learn from other experiences. So we're talking to amazing people the whole week, talking about those experiences here on theCUBE, fresh on theCUBE for the first time, Chris Voss, Senior Thank Software you. Engineer at Microsoft Xbox. Chris, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. So first off, give us a high level picture of the environment that you're running at Microsoft. Yeah, so um, you know we've got 20, well probably close to 30 clusters at this point around the globe. Um, you know, 700 to 1,000 pods per cluster, roughly. Um, so about 22,000 uh, pods total. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty, pretty sizable uh, footprint. And um, yeah, so we've been running on Kubernetes since 2018. Um, uh, and well, actually, it might be 2017, but um, anyways. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of our, our footprint. Um, yeah. So all of that, you, 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 let's talk about the basics, which is security across multiple, I'm assuming containers, work microservices, et cetera. Why did you and the team settle on Linkerd? Yeah, so um, previously we had our own kind of solution for managing uh, TLS certs and things like that. And we found it to be pretty painful pretty quickly, and so we knew you know, we wanted something that was a little bit more abstracted away from the developers and, and things like that, um, that allowed us to um, move quickly. And so um, we began investigating you know, solutions to that, and um, a few of our colleagues went to KubeCon uh, in San Diego in 2019, CloudNativeCon as well, um, and uh, basically they just, you know, sponged it all up, and uh, actually, funny enough, my, my old manager uh, was one of the people who was there, and he went to the Linkerd booth, and they had a thing going that was like, hey, get set up with MTLS in five minutes, and he was like, this is something we want to do, why not check this out, and he was able to do it, and um, so that, that put it on our radar, and so, um, yeah, we investigated several others, and uh, Linkerd just perfectly fit exactly what we needed, so. So in the end we are talking about, you know, security at scale, mm -hmm. so how you manage security at scale. It, and also flexibility, right? So, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, what is the, you told us about the five minutes to start using there, but, mm -hmm. you know, again, we're talking about war stories, we're talking about, you know, uh, all this. So, so what, what, what kind of challenges you found at the beginning when you started adopting this technology? So the biggest ones were around getting up and running with like a new service, especially in the beginning, right? We were, you know, adding a new service almost every day it felt like. And so, um, you know, basically it took someone going through a whole bunch of different repos, getting approvals from everyone to get the certs minted, all that fun stuff, getting them put into the right environments and in the right clusters to make sure that you know, everybody is talking <laughs> appropriately. Um, and just the amount of work that that took alone um, was just a huge headache and a huge barrier to entry for us to you know, quickly move up uh, the number of services we have. So, so I, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around the scale of the challenge. When I think about certification or certificate management, I have to do it on a small scale. 
and mm -hmm. the, the every now and again when a certificate expires it is just a troubleshooting pain yes so as i think about that it costs it's not just certificates across 22,000 pods or it's certificates across 22,000 pods in multiple applications. Mm -hmm. How were you doing that before Linkerd? Like what was the what and what were the pain points? Like what happens when a certificate either fails or expired up not uh, not updated? So, I mean, to be completely honest, the biggest thing is um, we're just unable to make the calls, you know, out or or in based on, um, yeah, what is failing basically. But um, you know, we saw essentially an uptick in um, failures around a certain service, and pretty quickly, I, pretty quickly, we got used to the fact that it was like, oh, it's probably a cert expiration issue, um, and so. We tried you know, a few things in order to make that a little bit more automated and things like that, um, but we never came to a solution that like, didn't require every engineer on the team to know essentially quite a bit about this just to get into it, um, which was a huge issue. So talk about day two, after you've deployed Linkerd, how did this alleviate software engineers and what was like the, the benefits of now having this automated way of managing certs? So the biggest thing is like there is no touch from developers. Everyone on our team, well, I mean there are a lot of people who are familiar with security and certs and all of that stuff, but um, no one has to know it. Like it's not a requirement. Like for instance, I knew nothing about it when I joined the team. Um, and even when I was setting up our newer clusters, um, I knew very little about it, and I was still able to really quickly set up Linkerd, which was really nice. And, and it's been, you know, essentially, we've been able to just kind of set it and not think about it too much. Obviously, you know, there are parts of it that you have to think about, and we monitor it and all that fun stuff. But, uh, but yeah, it's been pretty painless almost day one. Mm. Um, it took a lot, of, a long time to trust it um, mm. for developers. You know, anytime there was a failure, it's like, oh, could this be Linkerd? You know, <laughs> um, but after a while, like now, we don't have that immediate assumption because people have built up that trust. But also, you have this massive infrastructure. I mean, thirty clusters. So I, I guess that it's quite different to manage a single cluster than thirty. Mm -hmm. So, what are the you know, uh, consideration that you had to do to install this software on, you know, 30 different clusters, manage different, you know, versions probably, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, the, the, as far as like, I guess, just to clarify, are you asking specifically with Linkerd or are you just asking in more in general? Well, I, I mean, you, you can take the, uh, the question in, the, in two ways. Okay, so, yeah. yes, Linkerd in particular, but the 30 cluster is also quite interesting. Yeah, well. so I mean, you know, more generally, you know, how we manage our clusters and things like that, we have you know, a CLI tool that we use um, in order to like, change context very quickly and switch and communicate with whatever cluster we're trying to connect to and you know, are we debugging or getting logs, whatever. Um, and then you know, with Linkerd, um, it's nice because again, you know, we, we aren't having to worry about like, oh, how is this cert being inserted in the right uh, node, or, or not the right node, but in the right cluster or things like that. Um, whereas with Linkerd, we don't, we don't really have that concern. When we spin up our, our um, clusters, essentially we get the uh, root certificate and, and everything like that um, packaged up, passed along to Linkerd on an installation, and then essentially there's not much we have to do after that. <laughs> so talk to me about your upcoming section here at KubeCon. What's the, what's the high level talking points? Like what, what will uh, attendees learn? Yeah, so it's, it's a journey. Uh, those are the sorts of um, talks that I find useful. Having not been, you know, I, I'm not a deep Kubernetes expert from you know, decades or whatever of experience, but. Um, I think nobody is. <laughs> true, true. yes, <laughs> that's but, um, also that's true. That's another story. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's a uh, job posting, the decades of requirements for Kubernetes. <laughs> of course, <experience>. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, so, you know, it, it's a journey. It, it's really just like, hey, what made us decide on a service mesh in the first place? 
what made us choose Linkerd, and then what are the ways in which you know we we use Linkerd? So what are the you know uh, we use some of the extra plugins and things like that, um, and then finally um, a little bit about more what we're going to do in the future. Let's talk about not just necessarily the future, as in two or three days from now or two or three years from now. Well, the future after you immediately solve the, the low level problems with Linkerd, what were some of the, the surprises? Because Linkerd and service mesh in general has, have side benefits. Did you experience any of those side benefits as well? Yeah, it's funny, you know, writing the, um, uh, the blog post, uh, you know, I hadn't really looked at a lot of the data in years on, you know, when we did our investigations and things like that, and we had seen that we, like, um, had very low latency and low CPU utilization and things like that. And looking at some of that, um, I found that we were actually saving time off of requests and I couldn't really think of why that was and I was talking with someone else and um, the biggest, unfortunately all that data is gone now, like the source data, so I can't go back and verify this, but it, it makes sense. Um, you know, there's the uh, uh, availability zone routing um, that, uh, Linkerd supports, and so I think that's actually doing it. Where you know, essentially, if a node is closer to another node, um, mm -hmm. it's essentially you know routing to those ones. So when one service is talking to another service, and maybe on, they're on the same node, you know, um, it it short circuits that and allows us to gain some uh, some time there. It's not huge, but it adds up after you know 10, 20 calls down the line. Right, in, in general, so you, you are saying that it smooths operations in, 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 and it's very, you know, simplifying your life. Mm -hmm. And again, we didn't have to really do anything for that. It, it, it handled that for it us. It was there, yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, we know one thing, when I do it on my laptop, it works fine. When <laughs> I do it with across 22,000 pods, that's a different experience. What were some of the lessons learned coming out of KubeCon 2018 in San Diego? I was there, I wish I would have ran <laughs> to the Microsoft folks. But what were some of the hard lessons learned uh, scaling Linkerd across the 22,000 nodes? So, you know, the, the first one, and this seems pretty obvious, but was just not something I knew about, uh, was the high availability mode of Linkerd. Um, so obviously, makes sense you would want that in a, you know, a large scale environment. Um, so, like, that's one of the big lessons that, like, we didn't right away know. Like, one of the mistakes we made in, in one of our pre-production clusters was not turning that on, and we mm. were kind mm. of surprised. We were like, whoa, like, all of these pods are spinning up, but they're having issues, like, actually getting injected and things like that, and we found, oh, okay, yeah, you need to <laughs> actually give it some, some more resources. But it's still very lightweight, um, considering you know they have high availability mode. But it's just a few instances still. So, from even from a you know binary perspective and running Linkerd, how much overhead is it? Um, that is a great question. Um, so, I don't remember off the top of my head the numbers, mm -hmm. um, but it's very lightweight. We we evaluated a few different service meshes, and um, it was the lightest weight that we encountered at that point. And then from a resource perspective, is it uh, a team of Linkerd people? Is it a couple of people? Like, how? To be completely honest, for a long time it was one person, Abraham, um, who actually is the person who proposed this talk. He couldn't make it to Valencia, but um, uh, he essentially did probably 95% of the work to get a, into production, and then um, this was before we even had a team dedicated to our infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, and so we have, now we have a team dedicated, we're all kind of Linkerd folks, if not Linkerd experts, um, we at least can troubleshoot basically and things like that. So it's, uh, I think, a group of six people um, on our team and then you know, various people who've had experience with it uh, but on other teams. But I am not dedicated just to that. I mean, no one is dedicated so. just to it, no. It, it, it's pretty, like, pretty light touch once it's, yeah. once it's up and running. It took a very long time for us to really understand it and, and to you know, get like not getting started, but like getting to where we really felt comfortable letting it go in production. Um, but uh, once it was there, like it is very, very light touch. Well, I really appreciate you stopping by, Chris. It's been an amazing conversation to hear how Microsoft 
is using an open source project exactly at scale. It's just a few years ago when you would have heard the concept of Microsoft and open source together, like, oh, that's just, you know. <laughs> but but Microsoft have changed a lot in the last few yeah. years. Yeah. Now they are huge contributors, and they, you know, if you go to Azure, it's full of open source stuff everywhere, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Wow, the KubeCon 2022, how the world has changed in so many ways. <laughs> From Valencia, Spain, I'm Keith Townsend, along with Enrico Signoretti. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. <laughs>